Hey, I'm Alec, and on today's weekend build, I'm going to use the X-Carve to make a personalized rustic centerpiece. The X-Carve is an incredible tool to add to your workshop that will give you the ability to make custom things on the fly and design them very easily using Easel Pro. On its own, the X-Carve is a robust machine capable of carving through soft metals and hardwoods, but when paired with Easel Pro, you're able to use roughing and detailing passes so that you can make things a lot quicker than you would otherwise. I had wedding slices like these at my wedding recently, and when I saw them I thought it would have been really nice if I could have been able to create something custom on this rather than just have it as a blank piece of wood. Well, I have a cousin who's getting married early next year, so I thought it'd be a great idea to make something custom for her using some of these as a basis. With that idea in mind, the X-Carve made the most sense for this sort of project. So I'm going to use Easel Pro and design something within it using the different fonts and images that it has, which is actually pretty easy. Then I can take a wood slice, clamp it down onto the X-Carve, use a V-carving bit to get all of the detail and still have some pretty good speed. And then once it's finished, I'll coat it in some shellac and use a little paint in the details to really give it some contrast and make it pop. So now let's go ahead and jump into easel and design something. So here we are, we have our different material choices. I'm just gonna pick soft maple. You don't have to be exact with this, but it's a good starting ground. And since we're using Pro, I can select the 90 degree V carving bit. Then I'm gonna go ahead and use a circle to get a rough dimension of the workable area of this piece of wood. So we'll make it about eight and a half inches in diameter and we'll just set the depth to 0.1 so I have a representation on the right side. Then I'll also change the workpiece size so that I can see a full rendering of what my carve will look like. Now I'm not actually gonna carve out the circle. This is just a template so I can have something to work with on the right side. Then I can go ahead and start dropping in some text, picking through a couple different fonts that are usable with an easel. And I can just copy and paste these a couple times so I have a few to work with and then I can just space them out and start changing them to say what I need them to. Now I can just line them up, get them in a better position that don't have to be final, I can still work with this, but just trying to get an idea of what I want the finished product to look like. Then I can go in and add in some images by coming on the left side and clicking the little smiley face. And these are a bunch of preset vector files in here, and I'm gonna use this banner to go behind their new last name. Now, as you can see, they're overlapping each other, so I can just right click and either bring the text forward or send the ribbon further back. So there's forward, backward, send to back, or send to front, and that will either bring it one step further behind or forward or send it all the way. Here, I'm going to just select the three parts of the ribbon and combine them so that I can work with them all as one piece instead of accidentally scaling up just the middle section and not the sides. And then I can go ahead and send this backward so it's behind the text and then I can rescale them so that they fit a bit better within the area that I have. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add in a little more detail, scroll to the bottom of the icons, and I'll use this floral detail to kind of fill up the space on the right side and give it a bit more going for it, something a little more intricate than just some text. I can scale it, I can rotate it, I'm just gonna place it and size it just enough where it fits, but not so big that it's taking over the focal point, which is the text. So on the right side, I'm gonna generate the detailed preview to give me an idea of what the finished product will look like. And I'm happy with the way it looks. I don't want it to have the big circle cut out, so I'll delete that. That's just there for my reference. And then I can go into shape, click the center, and move the center to zero, zero. That way it'll be a lot easier to get this set up on the X-Carve without having to figure out where is the lower left corner of a circle. It's gonna be way easier to just find where the center of the circle is. Then I'll let it generate another toolpath so I can get a preview just to make sure that things are all gonna work in that spot. Things look good. That's about it. So now that we have that designed, we can go ahead and go into the space that we set up in the lab for all our carving and get some carving done. Now I have a piece of plywood that's some scrap that I'm just gonna use as a test to make sure that I don't ruin this. I only have one of these, so I wanna make sure that when I do it, I do it right the first time. So let's get to it. I used the provided clamps to clamp down a scrap piece of plywood so I could run a test before I use my one piece of wood and potentially screw it up. Then I could take the dust shoe and mount it just high enough where it'll clear over all the clamps and not run into them. Then I could just set it up and do a quick test carve. I used a ruler to mark and find the rough center point of this piece of wood so I could go into Easel Pro and follow the guide to help set this up, like measuring the thickness of the wood. 
Then I just had to follow along, and the next step said to make sure everything was clamped down. Then I had to probe it to find where the top of the material is so it knows how far in it has to carve, and that's easy with the included Z probe. Then I could go ahead and start and just let it do its thing. Now anytime you're carving, you always wanna make sure you're nearby in case anything goes wrong. This is using a bit that is spinning very fast, so I was always right there, ready to press the emergency stop button just in case it bit into the wood too hard and started moving everything around. When it was all done, I turned off the spindle, left the vacuum on, and cleaned up the little bits of dust. Then I could unclamp it and remove it. So now that it's carved, I can go ahead and start finishing it. I'm gonna use some spray-on shellac and some paint. I'll use this to seal the wood because I wanna use the paint and make sure it doesn't seep into the wood grain and spread where I don't want it. And by using this, I can also use this as a filler. So I can just get really messy, put it over the entire thing, and then wipe it off with a damp cloth and then have it only stay within all the crevices, which means that I can have a really clean looking edge without having to worry about a ton of different masking. Let's get spraying. This shellac is super easy to work with. I just have to give it a light mist, wait till it's tacky, then I can spray on the second coat. Once I gave it a couple coats of shellac, I wanted to go ahead and sand it since the shellac would raise the grain, sanding it would help remove those little bits, and then I could get a much smoother surface because I'll go back again with more shellac. The shellac also helps seal the wood, so I could use paint and get it in all the grooves of the carving without having it stay within the wood grain. So I could just use a wet paper towel to help rub off all the paint. It's important to do this in stages so that you don't have the paint drying and staying on top of the wood, and instead you're able to wipe it off while it's still wet. I gave it one final pass of sandpaper just to get rid of any bits of paint that may have seeped over the edge of the lettering, and then I could go ahead and spray this whole thing again to give it a super smooth finish. And really, that's it. This project's done. It didn't take much time at all, and for my first project using the V-carving bit and Easel Pro, this came out way better than I expected. The little details here were carved out with no problem and looking at an Easel Pro, I was questioning whether or not they'd come out and it worked, it worked really well. One point of advice is I would use a lint-free cloth versus a paper towel like I did. It worked okay, but I was starting to get little bits of paper towel in the different crevices because while these corners aren't sharp, they are sharp enough to tear up the paper. So just get a nicer piece of cloth and you'll do much better. So I hope that this project has given you some ideas of something you can make either for this holiday season, like I'm definitely gonna do, or just for any project, any time of year. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Hey there, thanks for watching that video on the Inventables x Carve with V-Carving Bits using Easel Pro. As you can see, you can make some pretty impressive projects. If you wanna see more videos on digital fabrication, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Or if you wanna read in-depth articles, you can go to matterhackers.com. See you in the next one.